So in this lesson, we're going to look at the downfall of the Roman kings, in particular the downfall of Tarquinius Superbus. Also going on about the orders, the Roman orders, uh, the, the Patrician plebeians in a bit more detail, and the event is called the Rape of Lucretia. So Patrician, plebeian, I'll talk about those in a lot more detail in a moment. Social mobility, being able to move between the groups is social mobility. If you're born poor, you get become rich in our country. Wealth is the value of the things you own. Privilege, so rights that you have that other people don't have. A magistrate, a Roman term for somebody who helps run the place. Doesn't mean the legal thing like we mean today. Hoplite, sort of soldier, infantry, soldier on foot. Lucretia, the name, blackmail, virtue, being a good person, behaving the correct way, or virtuous. Suicide, and someone's name, Brutus. Questions from the last lesson about how Tarquinius becomes king? You know what to do. Okay. Rome has two orders. They're not quite the same as social classes, because you can't move between them at the time we're talking about. And they're based on birth, not wealth. You're, at the time we're talking about, you appear to have been born into either the patricians or the plebeians. And the big thing about the patricians is not their wealth, so they're the ones who run things. All the senators are patricians. If you want to have one of the jobs helping to run the city, you have to be a patrician, you can't be a plebeian. All the political power is in the hands of one of the orders, the patricians. So, who are the, the plebeians? Well, they're the workers. They're the small farmers who work in the lands around Rome. They're the shopkeepers. They're the ones who do the graft. And importantly, they make up the vast bulk of any Roman army. They're not poor. They can afford their kit. So they fight in the early Roman legions. They, are the, they, they fight in hoplites in this period, same as the Greeks, the round shield, all that business. But they are the bulk of the Roman army. The Roman army relies on plebeians volunteering to fight in the army. They're not forced to, they're not slaves. They volunteer. The patricians, the ruling group of Rome, more power. Again, you're born into this. And the big thing is they control all the magistracies. If you want to be a Roman general, a praetor, a consul, wherever it is, you've got to be a patrician first. Now, in early Roman history, during the time of Romulus and people like that, it looks like, the sources say, that the patrician order was what we call fluid or open. You could become a patrician. Crucially, by the time we're talking about, the system becomes become rigid or closed. You were either born into this group and you had this power, or you were not and you could not exercise that power. It is not directly to do with wealth. Often patricians were wealthy, but they didn't have to be. Plebeians could be wealthy, but no matter how rich they were, they couldn't exercise any or much political power. Okay, now, let's go on to the story of how the, the Tarquins fall. It's called the Rape of Lucretia. And it starts miles away from Rome in a town called Ardea, which the Romans are besieging. Tarquin Sextus is the son of Tarquinius uh, Superbus. He's having a drink with his mates. One of them is his cousin, Coratinus. They're having a drink and they're bragging about how fantastic their wives are. They're all saying, my wife's the best. And by the best, they don't mean the best looking, they mean the most virtuous. They're behaving the correct way. The correct way for a big shot Roman woman, a patrician woman to behave, if her husband is away, is to be sitting at home, quietly sewing, that sort of thing. Not having a drink and a party. And they're all saying, oh, my wife's the most virtuous. No, my wife's the most virtuous. So to settle the bet, they all travel back to Rome unexpectedly at night. And they go to the house of the royal princesses, 
to our Quinius Sextus and to our Quinius uh, Silvus' house. And the women there are drunk and having a party. They go to Collatinus' house. And his wife, Lucretia, is very virtuously, chastely, sitting there doing the sewing like a Roman should. Yeah? So Collatinus has won the bet. And he invites all his mates to have a drink with him at his house, served by Lucretia, his wife. At this point, our man Tarquinius Sextus here, the wife of the, the husband of the sorry, son of the king, gets all inflamed and lustful thoughts about this woman. He wants to have her, he wants to rape her. She's so virtuous and beautiful. But he waits. He comes back a couple of days later and says, I want to have sex with you. She says, No. He says, Okay, fine. If you don't have sex with me, I'm going to rape you. And then when I've raped you, I'm going to murder you. And then when I've murdered you, I'm going to murder a male slave and put their body on you. And then say, I came in and found you having sex with a slave and I killed you both. And then you will lose your virtue and your life. At that, Lucretia agrees to let Tarquinius Sextus have uh, rape her, have sex with her. But afterwards, after he's gone, she calls her husband and her dad to come and talk to her. Her husband brings along another, another member of the family, a guy called Brutus, and he and she tells them the story of what happened. And when she's finished telling the story, she picks up a knife and kills herself in front of them. At this, they're outraged, particularly Brutus decides that the Tarquins have got to go. We'll look at the quote in class. The Tarquins have got to go. The kings have got to go. The Roman people should suffer kings and their corruption no longer.